In Jackson section 2.2, we solve the potential for a point charge outside the conducting sphere with zero potential. And we solve that by the method of images. So the geometry is that uh, we have a sphere, conducting sphere with center at uh, origin. So we try to solve the potential due to a charge, point charge outside the sphere. So the, sphere the radius of the sphere is A, okay? And the point charge is at the position Y. Vector Y is defined as the magnitude of Y times the unit vector, what Jackson defined as N pi. N pi is the unit vector. And we want to solve the potential at any position x outside the sphere, which is defined as the magnitude x times the unit vector n. Okay, so the notation x and y now is not the Cartesian coordinate, just to uh, not to be confused. Okay, and then uh, that's angle gamma between the two vectors x and y. Okay. So we try to solve the, uh, the potential due to Q and then by the method images. So we assume there's a image charge Q pi at the location. This location is Y pi. We have to uh, mess it up. The location Y pi equals to magnitude y pi times this uh, unit vector n pi, n pi. Okay. So the potential can be written down now uh, right away. So the potential phi as a function of x is uh, due to two terms. So take the one over four pi epsilon zero out. So the first term is due to the original charge Q divided by the distance X minus the, this X minus the location of the charge which is Y. And then plus the contribution from the image charge Q pi divided by X, the distance between X and the location of the image charge which is Y pi. Okay. So that is uh, the form of the solution, but uh, we want to, to find the magnitude Q pi and, and the location Y pi by the fact that phi at X equals to A or the surface of the sphere is zero. And then uh, just uh, for a simple, Substitution will give you Q pi. It's just uh, a over uh, a over y Q, and y pi is just a square over y. Okay, that uh, is quite straightforward. This two will make the phi zero on the speaker surface. Okay, so and. The next one is to uh, do some integration in Jackson, uh, the discussion, the two integral. One is the total charge on the sphere. The other is the force on the sphere by due to the original charge. Okay, so uh, this two integration is not, they are, they are not difficult, but uh, it's just a little bit long. So I'll, I'll do it here. So the first step, uh, we can uh, either doing a, a derivative of on this of the potential on the surface, which is equivalent to evaluate the electric field component, uh, the radial component of electric field on the surface. Okay, so we can do it that way. So because once we have the potential, uh, this is outside the sphere, of course, and, and then uh, we can calculate the electric field 
by just summing up the Coulomb potential due to the two charges. So one is one x, one four four pi epsilon zero q and x minus y vector divided by distance x minus y q and plus q pi over x and times x minus y pi, x minus uh, y pi cubic term. Okay, so that is the electric field outside the sphere. And uh, to get the sigma, and we meant that the sigma, the surface charge density on the Speaker surface is basically just epsilon zero times the electric field on the surface. So this electric field dot n, the way the, the unit vector on the sphere, which is perpendicular to the sphere, and that evaluate at x equals to a. Okay, so that is uh, the charge density surface charge density. Now we have E and we can evaluate at x equals A and then dot into N. So what we have is uh, E. So x equals to A would be equals to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. And now this becomes Q and X is just uh, let in let me let us uh, express X and Y and Y pi and all that into this kind of unit vector n and n pi. So X is uh, just a times n pi when X equals a. So this is a n and minus y n pi and divided by a n minus y n pi and plus q pi and a n minus y pi n pi divided by a n minus y pi n pi cube. Okay. Now we can dot into n and then use the these two equations, the the magnitude and the location of the image charge to get which of q pi and n pi, uh, q pi and y pi. Okay, so uh, e dot n at uh, x equals to a. Now uh, let's see. So again, we can take out the uh, take out the a from these two factor. So that means uh, you have q uh, because one one you get get which of a in this factor n dot n is just one, and then minus y over a n dot n pi is cosine gamma. And then likewise in the in the denominator, take out a's this is cubic factor. Okay, take out a cube and cancel with one a so your a square, so a square and the magnitude one minus y over a cosine gamma cube. Okay, and then now uh, likewise. But uh, this time you are taking a y pi instead of y. So, so press uh, q pi. And once you take a y pi, and likewise in the denominator, you take a y pi. So you take a y pi q and cancel one y pi, your y pi square. And you have a over y pi 
n minus n pi q. Okay, and this one, uh, when you take out a over y pi, take out y pi, your a over y pi, and dot into n, you get one, and minus, uh, take out y pi and n pi, dot into n, get cosine of gamma. Okay, the reason is that uh, once we take out this factor, and now the, if you substitute y pi is a square over y, so this becomes uh, this becomes just y over a times n. Uh, no. I should see this is this is not correct. I actually not copy this copy. So let's just we get it right. This is not this one. Okay. I mean, I'm not doing that here. So y minus n minus y over a n pi q. All right. So now this distance will be the same as this distance. So you can take that out of the uh, bracket, and then uh, so. And then Q pine is Q pine is this is there's a negative sign. Q pine is negative a over y times Q. So both have a Q, so Q can take out. Okay. And then uh, let's just keep it like that. And we have four pi epsilon zero. Uh, let's take a one. Because this one is the same as this one, we can take that out. And the once you get the magnitude uh, work out, so it's basically the square of this vector and the dot product of this vector. So it becomes one plus y square over a square n dot n pi is cosine gamma. Uh, it's, it's just one first, yeah. The other term is this one, and then minus n dot n pi is minus two y over a cosine gamma. Okay, and three so half factor. Okay, so you take out all these. What is left in the first term is uh, uh, one minus y over a cosine gamma divided by a square. The other one is your q pi expresses minus minus a over y times q. So q take out, so minus a over y, minus a over y, and y pi, and then y pi is y pi is uh, a square over y, so you have a square, but this is y pi square, so you a fourth divided by y square. So you have this one times this one. Okay, this one divided by this one, and then times this one, a over y pi, so y pi, y pi is a square over y, so it become uh, y over a, y over a minus cosine gamma. Okay, now you can simplify all that. Okay, so uh, what you have is uh, you have one over a square. And you can take uh, take a square out. So the the terms that that doesn't in, involve a uh, cosine gamma. You have y over a times this y over a uh, a over y times y over a. So you can basically cancel this two. 
and so you have one of a square and y square of a fourth. So you take a square out. So equals the q of four pi epsilon zero a square times this factor. Okay, so what is left is one minus uh, y square over a, a square. And then you have these two factor that depends on cosine gamma. So what you have is uh, you have y over a cosine gamma. This is uh, you have y over a, because you cancel with one factor, uh, you get a squared out, so y over a cosine gamma, but this is a plus sign, so the two terms cancel. So, uh, so that would be the order, the contribution, or the final result or simplify to this one. So, uh, I guess that would be the correct answer. Okay. Uh, right. Okay, so. Uh, I guess this is correct. I mean, Justin has a, an, another expression, just uh, just slightly uh, changing that uh, the rotation. So that that's fine. Okay. So so that is uh, the e dot n. So so it means uh, sigma will be this one multiplied by epsilon zero. So you write sigma here, so you can cancel this uh, epsilon zero. Okay, so, so that is the charge that surface charge density on the surface. Okay, and now the, uh, First integration is the total charge, okay? And now the total charge is <coughs> just, uh, you need to do this <coughs> surface integral over the whole sphere, over this spherical surface, okay? And now the, it's integrating over sigma dA. And this surface, um, because uh, all this, uh, only the, the dependence only over this cosine gamma, okay, only, only, only over cosine gamma, and it is synergical symmetric around this, uh, this axis. So whatever you want to choose the axis uh, that, uh, Define the cosine gamma like n or n pi. It doesn't matter, and you do a surface integration. So let's just write out explicitly. So all, everything is uh, just a constant outside. Four pi a square. That's y square of a square. No, that that one is in the integral. Okay, so that is, and then in the integram is uh, you have the uh, the the integration is yet over a spherical surface. So you can use this spherical coordinate. So uh, basically, d phi is. C 
zero to two pi. And then theta in, in this is sine gamma, sine gamma, d gamma. Gamma is from zero to pi. And then the rest is here. So one over this plus y square of a square minus two y a over a cosine gamma. So you have, okay. And that's a square. This is uh, just this, the angular, so that's a square. Okay, and so now uh, d5 will give you two pi. So q over one minus y square over a square. And get which of the a square and, pi, and two pi divided by four pi give one half, okay? And this integration can be done with, uh, say, a change of variable. So instead of sine, sine gamma, d gamma, you can define, say, like uh, a to equals to cosine gamma. So d a to is minus sine gamma d gamma. So a to will be from one to negative ones, and so you can flip the sign and get rid of the negative sign. So it's minus one to one and d a there. So one plus y square over a square minus two y over a, a there, three half, three half. Okay, and this integration is kind of elementary because uh, that should give you Q over two. You do the integration. This is three half factor. You should get a one half, negative one half factor. So you uh, uh, because of the integration, you get the negative two out, and then you need to divide it by this factor in front of the eta. So you divide it by one over two y for a, so two y times a. Okay, and what you get is. Uh, you guess is one over square root of this one, one over y square over a square minus two y over a, a to one half, subject to minus one to one. I mean, evaluate at minus, minus one to one, okay? There's a negative sign because uh, you're divided by this one fact is is minus two. Okay, so now continue to simplify that. So uh, let's simplify all the factor in front. So you have uh, QAA over Y. Uh, just write it down here, so Q over two, cancel of this two, cancel of negative sign, and then you have a times y minus, cancel of that y times a. Okay. And that one, Evaluate uh, this factor, evaluate uh, one will give you one over the, the when a is one is, uh, this one is uh, one minus y for a square. When you take the square root, you, you need to keep in mind y is greater than a. So it's uh, y for a minus one and minus the other side when what a is Minus one, this would be one plus y for a. 
when you press arrive A, okay, so uh, so that will give you uh, that will give you Q over two. Actually, I don't. I can actually, the, the previous one actually not important, the simplification. I can just keep this one here. And then what is left is this uh, common denominator. It also give you one, actually, actually a negative sign of that. Actually, it's right, y over a square, y square over a square minus one. This common denominator will give, it, give us this. And uh, Cancellation with one plus y of a minus y of a minus one. So, uh, so we get your factor of two. So, this one this one cancel with a negative sign. Two and two cancel. What is left is minus a over y times q. So it's minus a over y times q which is by the original one, original equation, a over y times q minus sine give you q pi. That is just q pi. Okay, so that is the first uh, integral that, uh, that uh, on the spherical surface and the next step would be to calculate the f force. Okay, and uh, so I'll do it next time because I'm running out of space here. Okay, so we'll do that integration next time.